Today we're going to start assembling our lithium iron phosphate battery pack. What's going on everybody? My name is Dan. Welcome to Freely Roaming. So from the lithium video that I posted a few days ago, I give you guys a quick look at some of the components that you can buy now for really inexpensively. Cheaper than AGM batteries when you take into account the usable amp hours. And that's not even counting how many more cycle lives you're gonna get. So in a practical standpoint, over time, you're actually gonna spend a lot less money. Me being here in Croatia, it is part of the European Union, so it's possible for me to get products from all over Europe without having to pay extra taxes, but it is pretty slow to get stuff to ship here, and it's also limited in the things that I can get. For those of you that don't know, we have Amazon in Europe, but the big ones are Amazon France, Amazon Germany, and Amazon UK. And not everything in those Amazon stores are available for shipping to our address here in Croatia. So I've spent a good part of the last couple of months trying to figure out the components that I need. I bought things from Amazon, I bought things from AliExpress, I bought things from various other online shops that are willing to ship to Croatia, and this is what I've assembled. And I wanna show you guys the different parts that I plan on using. Not all the components you see here are the ones that I would have preferred to use if I had access to whatever I wanted, but this is a pretty good set of components to build a high quality and inexpensive lithium iron phosphate battery for your camper. So before we get into any of the building, let me first show you what we got going on. So obviously the main part of this build is gonna be these cells. These are those 280 amp hour lithium iron phosphate cells that I showed in the other video. These cells come with five bus bars and the hardware necessary to connect them together. There's two more bus bars over here that I'm not going to use. At first I was looking at these bus bars and I thought, wow, these are, these are pretty high quality. These are thick, they're copper with nickel plating. And I assumed that they were just a solid copper plate, but that's until I try to bend one of these. Then I realized that these are like laminated sheets of copper. I don't think they necessarily will perform any worse, but just to keep in mind that this is not a solid piece of copper plate, it's sheets of copper sandwiched together. So luckily I have two extras that I'm not gonna use, I'm just gonna set them aside. And the other important component, and actually these are the only two components you actually need, is obviously the first one is your battery pack, your cells, and then the only other thing you need is a BMS. And this BMS I chose is from Dolly Electronics. The model number is J05U-F116 or FL16. I'm not sure what that says. Um, it is a common port with balance feature. It's designed for 4S 12 volt, 120 amps. You can certainly get better BMS than this. This was about $90 and it doesn't have any customizable features. It's basically preset from the factory for this 4S 12 volt configuration. There's no Bluetooth, there's no any kind of data output that you can read. It is just what it is. It's set up to do this application. This particular battery chemistry with this configuration maxing out at 120 amps. You can certainly buy higher end BMSs. This, even though it's not a configurable BMS, it is pretty robust. You can see how big it is. And it's also got heat sinks on both sides. So I think it's gonna perform pretty well for my purpose. And this came with a wiring harness. And these are the balanced leads that plug into the bottom of the BMS, like that. The black one goes to your main negative. And then the next four wires that are red goes to your cell one, cell two, cell three, and cell four positive. So what that allows you to do, is that allows the BMS to know the voltage of each individual cell. So that's how it knows if the battery is balanced or not across all the cells. And you can see this jumble of wire that I've got put together here. So essentially what I did is I connected ring terminals to them, but 
What I also did is I added a few more sets of wires. This is an optional item that I'm using. This is a dedicated active cell balancer. This is about 30 to $40. And this also kind of works the same way. It has five leads, common negative, and then the four positive wires, cell one, cell two, cell three, cell four. So they, they all kind of get combined together. And along with that, I added two more leads for other things I'm going to connect to it later. And I got them all crimped together into a ring terminal. And these ring terminals would just get connected to common negative, first cell positive, second cell positive, third cell positive, and fourth cell positive. When you get your wires, they won't come like this. It'll just be this balance lead with five wires, and it'll end, come out to bare wires that you have to put your own ring terminals on. This is going to be my BMS cell balancing setup. And these extra wires that I've got hooked up, I'm actually waiting for some connectors to show up for this capacity controller. This is a digital battery capacity checker. You hook it up the same way. As you can see down here, it's designed to go as high as 7S. So it's compatible with lithium polymer, lithium iron phosphate, lithium ion, nickel metal hydride, and nickel cadmium. So this needs to be connected using a similar connector like this, which I currently don't have yet. And when I do get that, I will take one of these extra wires, extra set of five wires, hook them up to a terminal, and then plug it in here. And what this will tell me is what the BMS already knows, but doesn't have any way to output it to tell me the exact voltage of each cell. I don't expect these cells to go out of balance because they're brand new and they are from the same batch. They're really closely balanced right now. And as long as I use them together, charge them together, discharge them together, I shouldn't have any problems. But over time, I just like to know how they are and what the max min spread is between the highest voltage cell and the lowest voltage cell. And this is gonna tell me that. So these are gonna get put together and a couple of other things that I'm gonna use that's totally optional for you is I'm gonna install this smart shunt, which is what I have here. There's also a dedicated video that I can point you to that talks about shunts. This smart shunt will be connected to the negative battery terminal. So basically it's gonna go right here. So this is gonna go to the battery from the BMS and then this port is going to go right here like that and then all of the load will go to this side and then all i have to do is to connect a 12 volt wire from the front here to the common positive terminal and then this shunt's going to tell me exactly how much battery i have left how much battery capacity i have left exactly how many amps that I'm drawing or putting in. Also keep a data log of my usage over time. So that's my shunt that I'm gonna install. And then, because this BMS doesn't have, that I know of, a temperature sensor. So without a temperature sensor, there's no way to know if you're damaging your battery, if the temperature of the battery compartment is too cold and how you're charging your battery. Lithium iron phosphate batteries cannot be charged in a really, really cold environment, basically sub-zero, sub-freezing environment. So to remedy that, not being able to get a low temperature shutoff in my BMS, I got a Victron Smart Battery Sense. Very simple product. You can see it's tiny, just a little box, and all it's got is a positive and negative connection. You connect that to the battery. And then what it'll do is it will sense the voltage and the temperature of the battery. And what's cool about this is that this is all using Victron, which I'm also using Victron charge controllers for my solar panel. And also, as you can see in one of my other videos, I'm using a spare Victron solar charge controller for my shore power. So all of my charging will go through my Victron charge controllers and these can all be put together in a Bluetooth network so they talk to each other. 
Victron has done a really great integration using all of their products so that my charge controllers will be able to know exactly what the battery temperature is and I can set a low temperature cutoff so that when the battery sensor, temperature sensor, senses that it's below a certain temperature it'll cut it off and stop charging which will prevent these batteries from being damaged. And that's pretty much all the components. The other things you see here is I have a watt meter power analyzer uh, with some connectors hooked up to it. And I got an extra wire here. It's also got an XT90 connector hooked up and some ring terminals. I'm gonna use this to do some capacity testing. When my battery build is complete, I'm gonna charge it up. And I'm gonna run a load on it just to see exactly how many, uh, how many amps and watt hours that I get. Uh, a few other things here, you'll see this is the box that the smart shunt comes in. I have a lot of these foam pads. I plan on using these foam pads for just sort of protecting the cells inside the box that I'm going to build. I have this high temperature tape, which I will use. If I have to tape anything to the battery, tape the battery cells together, or tape the components to the enclosure, I'm going to use this tape for that. I have some thick gauge welding wire that I'll be using for whatever connections I need to make. As you can see here, I've made some homemade heavy duty copper ter ring terminals out of just your standard plumbing copper pipe. I suspect I'm going to need to make several short wires out of this this length of wire and then I'll make ring terminals out of this pipe by cutting it and crimping it using my hydraulic crimper. And that's it. That is a preliminary view of all the components that I have and what I will need to start building this, this uh, battery together. Over here I just want to show you one last thing. This is a, a glue lamb wooden board. I will probably end up using this to build a box to be able to house all this stuff in. Just from some basic measuring and calculation that I've done, I should be able to fit all of these components into a box no bigger than the current footprint and size of our AGM batteries. So there you go. That is basically my complete set of components that I've purchased to build my lithium iron phosphate battery pack. I have a complete list of items that I've shown in this video down in the description below if you're interested. In the next video, I will go into assembling these parts to build this battery pack, including building an enclosure for it all. If you have any questions about this build, feel free to ask them in the comments below. I'm happy to answer them for you. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already so you can follow through this entire build process. I will also be doing load and capacity testing to make sure that this battery pack lives up to the promise. Thanks again for watching, and special thanks for those that support us on Patreon. Those contributions really help us build this channel. Hope you guys enjoy this, and I'll see you guys in the next video.